in Gita it says, right? Uh, what you take owns you, what you give sets you free. So in some ways, you know, this is our way of giving back. Keeping your head in the game is the number one goal. Excellence in anything is hard because, you know, ex it's not easy because to be really, really good at something, you've got to focus, right? Excellence only comes with focus. Then the only reason you will succeed is if you are excellent. And you will be excellent only if you focus. And you will focus only if you know how to say no to things. There are conversations happening in the smallest towns of the country. And like young kids telling their parents, start up karna hai, job nahi karna hai. And it being a very acceptable conversation. Sometimes some decisions you can't over intellectualize also. Wo dil se aana chahiye. Ki yaar ye banda sahi hai, kuch karega life mein. Kunal, thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. And I'm going to tell this to everyone here in this room that, uh, you know, whatever we are seeing the startup ecosystem and we sab itna celebrate karte and we are all part of it and building it. But people who I would say are the co-builders of the story that has reached where it is and where we are. If you have to take the name of three then I would say Kunal Bell is uh, uh, one of the foremost builders. Snapdeal uh, was how we got, and I would say Snapdeal and Flipkart is how we got introduced to e-commerce in our country. And, and with Snapdeal also, the word Bharat came to the tech startup ecosystem. That's how a lot of India got to consume. Uh, commerce products. I want to understand now. Tell me what got you from an entrepreneur to investing and investing in so many startups in our country. First and foremost, before we get to me, I want to truly appreciate the role you've played in the startup ecosystem. You're actually at the center of you know, a lot of progress and positivity for so many years. And, you know, I study history a lot. I was thinking that the historical figure I would equate you to most is probably Valmiki, <laughs> right? You are actually the Valmiki of the startup ecosystem because you are chronicling um, stories and uh, characters. So I think big round of applause for Shraddha. Look, we, we only wanted to help founders. That's how we got started. It was really happenstance. 11 years ago, Rohit and I started investing because founders started reaching out to us. When we became a little visible, people were doing something. And you know, when we started our company, there were 5 million internet users in India. This was 15 years ago. To now, whatever, 8, 900 billion internet users. And seeing the entire arc of the evolution of the startup ecosystem, we've seen a lot of ups and downs, twists and turns in our own business, in other businesses that we are involved in or not involved in also you know, raising capital, hiring the first person, hiring the thousand person, doing marketing campaigns, uh, dealing with crises, and all those things, every founder goes through again and again and again and again. And we realized that, you know, we can probably help in enabling them to not make the same mistakes that almost everyone ends up making, or, or and at least increasing their likelihood of success. Also, we feel that this is an ecosystem that's given us everything we have. Rohit and I just showed up, right? In 2007, we just we finished our college, one year of work, and then I my H-1B visa didn't come, so I got deported from the US. Chal shuru karte hain. And we had nothing when we started, right? Nothing. We just showed up and one day in a basement office started. Everything we have today, knowledge, resources, everything we got from this startup ecosystem. This is our way to give back. You know, in Gita, it says, right, uh, what you take owns you, what you give sets you free. So in some ways, you know, this is our way of giving back. And obviously, we try to make it a commercially viable uh, because nobody has infinite money. So we try to make the right investment, support the founders so that we can then reinvest everything back into this activity. Kunal, immensely proud. And I'm hoping each one of us uh, and most of you go on to be 
uh, him and do this which is giving back and helping entrepreneurs and being in that place to be able to help entrepreneurs but for everyone's benefit today i want to ask you is that what is main kisi ne kaha main journalist nahi hu so ye english shabda ki tarah nahi use karunga but very simply what is your investing playbook kids how do you choose uh, companies because you have such winners राइट नाउ आई गॉट मतलब नाम गिरते जाते हैं ओला मामा अर्थ आई आई कैन यू नो देर सो मैनी टेल मी हाउ डू यू पिक कंपनीज फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट द सेम वे इफ एनी ऑफ माई इन्वेस्टर्स सेट वेंट ऑन अ स्टेज एंड स्टार्टेड टेकिंग क्रेडिट फॉर एवरी थिंग आई डिड आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू टेक क्रेडिट फॉर एनी थिंग दैट द फाउंडर्स डिड राइट इट्स द फाउंडर्स मे बी वी जस्ट टुक वन बेट वेरी अर्ली ऑन आफ्टर दैट एवरी थिंग दैट हैज बिन डन हैज बिन डन बाई द फाउंडर्स ऑफ दीज great businesses see at the earliest stages shraddha there is not m- much of data right like the stage which we invest which is um, there's no no product no revenue no team two guys in a powerpoint or two girls in a powerpoint um the thing we look for is there should be a singular problem statement they are very focused on solving but then there are three things we would largely check for one is quality of team right like have they shown success in anything in life right like they worked somewhere or um did they start something in college it could be the smallest thing but have they shown initiative to build something at any point in their lives um that, that is very important like logon ki aankh aankhon mein jhaank ke wo chamak dikhni chahiye ki ye kuch karenge yeah right the second would be just it should be a very interesting uh market it should be a market with lots of problems lots of friction a large problem to be solved for a lot of people and the best founders are actually great at getting investors to gaze into the crystal ball with them and i love getting mesmerized <laughs> by them uh in in gazing in that crystal ball and third is the ability for that business to generate unit economics mm-hmm. see as a business you have to be very clear there may be profit may come much later but at a unit level you should make money and we've learned these lessons the hard way ourselves right because you know e-commerce has not been known as you know the the temple of unit economics in by any stretch of imagination it's been a it's been a challenging space to say the least but as a business you have to decide very early on are you a squirrel with a tail or elephant with a trunk right are you a 10% margin business or are you a 50% margin business many times founders will say i'm 10% today but i'll become 50% later i i tell them i believe you but then it will be a different business mm. you can't be in the same business and become so dramatically different in your uh, margin structures so it's really just these three things but in the end it's i would say it's 90% the team you've invested in more than 250 companies no uh, but over 11 years right so <laughs> i think it's a lot of people say this titan capital i just heard the name 2 years ago but rohit and i have been investing for 11 years now so it's been a long time i think 250 companies over 11 years is okay now that you are here for the benefit of, of everyone because a lot of uh, companies would be looking at uh, raising capital or raising their first round of investment if they had to meet you or interact with you anything else that you would say that they should pick up like what is our decision making framework right when we meet a founder i think maybe there's some cues that founders can take from that firstly we are very fast right like we don't do brain damage so founders uh, when they come meet us they know ye log ek meeting mein bata denge mm-hmm. they are not going to get get us to keep running through hoops again and again um but we have a strong bias for investing behind category creating companies companies that everyone says ye nahi chalega this will not work we are naturally gravitated towards those like all the companies you mentioned at the time when we invested they seem like small niche businesses that would never go beyond maybe a hundredth of the scale or a thousandth of the scale they today are at so for us just taking what people call contrarian bets we don't think they are contrarian bets we think we get excited by someone solving for a problem statement that nobody else has solved till now uh, however challenging however challenging it may seem also we show up with no biases we have no people ask me sometimes i'm i meet our fellow ecosystem friends and ask me so what are the themes you are excited by i was like i have no theme i have no bias i have no understanding about anything i just meet the founder i ask them aap kya karte ho what do you do let's talk about that let's have a interesting conversation about that and that's it 
like it could be we've insect invested in insect farms also wow. right um, because we thought that was a fantastic business that needs to be built mm. and that founder was so passionate about building an insect farm we said we should do that right or a company that helped people who stammer uh, solve their stammering we thought this is a great problem there are tens of millions of people who stammer and there's no yeah. good way of solving for that for us it's just showing up with no preconceived notion no bias is very critical um, and then once you've invested just be available be helpful you know we we tell founders that look if things are going well it's fine everyone you can update everyone send us a bcc email but when things when shit hits the fan when things are really bad call us first because we've seen so many crises right ourselves as founders as well as in other businesses we may be involved in that chances are we've seen your crisis before or at least we can help you think through a framework of solving for it you know coming to uh, we've used this word quite a lot uh, and and we've been listening to this funding winter and and when you're starting up when you're bootstrap when you just you know building your business this time looks like a very difficult time and i'm asking you because last 10 years more or less the indian startup ecosystem has seen so much of capital and i was looking at the number 2021 some 30 billion dollar was invested only in the vc not even private equity lekar kuch 80 billion was there so we've seen so much of capital year on year come and suddenly uh, it's a barren land from fertile land it's a barren land and and you know we were discussing and you used a very interesting word which is homogeneous pain that pain unicorns ko bhi hai bahut zyada and and now pain is across series a b early stage everyone is experiencing that because there is this kind of a ki it's tough and sometimes people are saying though this next quarter is going to be tougher i want to understand from you in this kind of scenario and i'm asking you because i feel you are one of the best people to answer this because you've seen all kinds of summers and winters that the indian startup ecosystem has produced in the last 10 years what do you want to say because sun sun ke bahut sun rahe hain ab kare kya see mujhe sabse pehle lagta hai it's important to not lose hope right just crisis is upon us let's say if for a business a first acknowledge the fact a crisis is upon me now there is no escaping it i can't sleep it away i can't sleep for two nights and it will just vanish it will be there so but it is also very important for founders to know um that it is super critical to keep your head in the game the tech world is so dynamic it changes it's not constant the frothy times are not constant the barren times are not constant keeping your head in the game is the number one goal if you somewhere let go or you give up you may regret it somewhere down down the road saying had i only held on for that one year when things were bad or two years when things were bad and i would have made it out because everyone else vanished in the meanwhile you just can't give up so you have to first and foremost you have to promise to yourself i will not give up right i will keep my head above water however tough the times will be then now comes the reality of how to do it see if you you have to look at your business very dispassionately and say i have this much money left this is what it will what it'll take for me to maybe just break even reduce my burn to near zero and uh, and i know there are a lot of layoffs etc right now which is very unfortunate but that should be really the last last resort the first resort has to be looking at one's business and seeing where are the islands of profitability in my business and conversely you'll realize here are the islands of unprofitability in my business and it's important to however you know passionate you were about those projects however much you love those initiatives just shut them down and you got to be almost ruthless about shutting those down because if you are not and you say let's give it a little bit of lease of life um you'll never be able to do what you need to do very importantly if this is a change in direction in the company you have to align your team you have to know who is with you and who is not with you in this journey and it's okay if some of them are not with you and they want to pursue something else it's okay it happens it's very human there's no bad blood in that you have to align your investors you have to align your board members you have to make sure that everyone is with you nobody feels ye aap 
घर पे बैठे बैठे आपने कुछ अपनी तरकीब बना ली खुद ही सोच लिया एंड यू जस्ट गॉन अ डिफरेंट रूट टेक एवरी वन विद यू एंड यू मे सक्सीड यू मे फेल बट टेक एवरी वन विद यू सो दैट देर आर देर नो फिंगर पॉइंटिंग सेइंग आई टोल्ड यू सो और यू डेंट टेल मी फाइनली सुपर इंपॉर्टेंट टू कॉन्स्टेंटली कम्युनिकेट इट कम्युनिकेट 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 विद योर टीम आई थिंक इन द इन इन द टफेस्ट मोमेंट्स द थिंग दैट कीप्स गेट्स कंपनीज आउट is not the founders is not the ceo it's the team and if you don't tell the team what's wrong what we need to do the difficult choices we need to make how will they actually act on it how will they start applying their minds how will they galvanize with each other to say guys crisis is upon us but we will all solve it together and that you can only do if you communicate transparently with them fearlessly saying it's okay we are in a tough spot but we will have the courage to continue and we will come out of this together and before you know just you put one foot ahead of the other before you know slowly 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 you come out of the trough and you realize wow summer's here again kuna when you were saying this i had just had a question that as a founder as an entrepreneur you're supposed to be the problem solver right you're supposed to be the person in charge in control uh, and you need to have answers you know there are certain expectations because you're working with a team which is expecting that you will be able to deliver and that's why you are the ceo or that's why you're the entrepreneur that's why you're the founder in that kind of scenario sometimes i've seen founders and myself included that you know you don't want to come across as main dimag mein main pagal ho raha hu ya ho rahi hu aur meri lagi hui hai aur i'm under depression right and and when you're going through that stress how do you actually like how much of vulnerability how much of openness you can show that listen i messed up or i don't know see it's not the time for blame game hmm. right i think a lot of focus goes in saying who is accountable yeah doesn't matter now yeah how is that going to change the fate yeah the only thing that matters is we acknowledge there is a problem we come up with a plan together that everyone believes in and we just keep our heads down and execute on that plan that's the only thing that matters now and i think if as a founder or a ceo you're just very transparent with this is what we need to do we all know who needs to do what let's go and be very missionary about that as compared to just reminiscing about the good times and kya the hum ab kya reh gaye doesn't matter nobody yeah. cares yeah only thing that matters is are you going to be able to keep your head above water are you going to be come out of are you going to be able to come out of this crisis or not that's the only thing that matters you have to grow a very thick skin right because there will be so much noise you will have competitors who will be saying oh that company is gone it's finished look we are doing so well they'll be creating noise but how do you know maybe that's a way for them to conceal their own problems yeah right just focus on oneself just internally and be very passionate about the plan that you've made to come out of the the crisis you're in and just be have blinders on to everything else only with focus will you be able to come out of that what matlab hum bahut loosely use karte hain resilient but aaj agar mujhe kunal bel se puchne ki 12 13 14 saal mein wo kya hai resilience mujhe khud bhi nahi pata hai i think i wish i knew the answer by the way you are very kind i don't think of myself as a resilient person like nobody wakes up and says gosh am i i'm so resilient right like yeah. that's not yeah, the yeah. like I know some people look at themselves in the mirror and say gosh I'm so good looking <laughs> right but like I don't think you wake up in in the morning and say gosh I'm so resilient I you know I think Rohit and I have a manufacturing defect which is we just don't understand failure hmm. failure has never been an option for us when we were sit working out of a basement of a lawyer's house in Delhi's furniture market Kirti Nagar we tried five different businesses nothing worked but you just say okay yeah this one didn't work i think we have to let's sleep over it let's start a fresh tomorrow it wasn't that okay let's start job hunting hmm so we've always had this mindset of failure is not an option we'll always find a solution that this some deep intrinsic belief that there is always a solution it may be a suboptimal one it may not be a solution to greatness but it, there will be a solution and i keep coming back to important to just keep your head above water right never let your head go below water i mean like we are here today right the reason we are here today is because we never gave up when you are at the bottom of the abyss shraddha 
you always feel it's time to give up. Yeah. But that courage to continue when you're at the bottom of the abyss, if you can find that little bit of courage at that point in time, most people, 99 out of 100 people don't have it at that point in time. Because all is lost. Everyone around you is telling you all is lost. Yeah. And at that point in time, if you muster that little bit of courage and start coming out of it, as I said, things are much better. You know, all of us as entrepreneurs can understand uh, what you are saying. And I hope all of us have that courage. Uh, first of all, I hope we, we all will actually experience pain at some point or the other. And I hope all of us have the pain uh, to carry it through. And thank you because you've shown it that one can. That brings me to this question, Kunal, that in India, we've seen venture capital ecosystem. All of us have experienced it in the last time. We have some very remarkable VCs in this country. But there is always this debate that VCs have not taken the kind of risks jo venture capital mein hona chahiye. And that's why I somehow feel that, you know, like US has operator turned uh, investors and you are an operator, entrepreneur turned investor. Why do you, if we have to make a case that we need that more in our country, more investors like you, first, do you think that logic holds true? And, and if it is, then why do we need more? Look, in the US, we all know, right? Eventually, most of the VC firms are also manned by former operators. That doesn't mean you have to be an operator to be a good investor. There are enough examples, like most of the original folks at, for instance, Sequoia, none of them were operators, right? Like yeah. Don Valentine and Mike Moritz and none of them were operators. And they're all fantastic investors. Even the current VC firms are manned by people who may or may not be operators and many of them are fantastic investors. That said, um, you know, operators do bring a few things, like at least how I think about it. One is they bring the operator mindset. See, operator mindset is a very different mindset. It's a it's a nuts and bolts mindset. It's about no job is beneath me, hmm. right? I'm happy. I can easily do these altitude shifts to help the in founder, Yeah. right? That I can help you with the fundraise, but I can also help you if you're thinking through why the CAC has gone up last month, right? So that's sort of the operator mindset, right? Just being able to zoom in, zoom out very quickly because you do that every day in your yeah. business. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, the second thing is just long-term orientation. I think operators tend to have incredible long-term orientation because businesses take a long time to build. Third would be ecosystem. Like at least in our case, we're not a fund, right? Because we're not in, we are investing only our capital. So we don't have any external capital that we're investing. But we've built what we call a great ecosystem where we have about five, 600 founders in our ecosystem and they help each other. If someone's looking for a great UX design agency, I may not know, but some founder in the ecosystem will know, hey, I use this guy, he's fantastic. Right? So that your time to market comes down. So that's what operators are able to build like ecosystem of founders. And finally, I would say a founder empathy that they have because mm. operators, they've gone through, like we were talking about, a lot of issues of their own uh. through their journey. So they bring a lot of founder empathy to the equation. Uh. So I would say it's some of these things that make operator uh, investors very sort of sought after, even in the US, even here. And I feel that we need a lot more of them. Like we may have been one of the early crops. We need many, many more. And we will have many, many more. There's no doubt in my mind. Yeah, and you know, I'm sure today a lot, today in this audience, many would go on to become operator, hopefully operator turned investors. India needs it. One more co uh, conversation I wanted to bring uh, here is that profitability versus growth. <laughs> Last 10 years, you know, today Kabir was there, Danzo, we, you know, I, and, and all of you are also uh, guilty a little bit of that. GMVs were big numbers. Growth was always, you know, chase growth and profitability will follow. Now suddenly it is, every company is giving an announcement that we are becoming profitable in next 12 months. Next six months. The, where, where is the balance? See, by the way, I don't think any company has ever said that they don't want to be profitable. Hmm. So I feel we give founders too hard a time also sometimes. <laughs> I have never met a single founder who said, I don't want to ever be profitable. Hmm. Everyone wants to be profitable from the get go. So you have to give them credit that they, those principles are in place with 100% of the founders. The mismatch often lies in how and when. Hmm. Right? Like, how will one get there? When will one get there? And what will it take to get there? Right? That's where the debate usually happens. 
And I feel that uh, while profitability at a company level may take time, it's very important from the get-go for unit economics to be in place. Because it's very hard to rewire the business later on to say, oh, once I have scale, I'll, my unit economics will... I've never seen unit economics improve with scale. Never seen, or at least materially, I've never seen them improve with scale. So, um, also, there is this, you know, uh, misadvice or bad advice that is uh, that g goes around town, which is growth solves all problems. Yeah, it's absolutely nonsense because growth with positive unit economics solves a lot of problems. Growth with negative unit e economics compounds your problems. Because you're, you're in a deeper hole then. Mm -hmm. Kunal, do you think that the last 10, 12 years, what we saw, which was, I feel, the building blocks of whatever we are seeing now, the startup ecosystem overall, right? Uh, do you think that the next few years would be different now? The way companies would be built when it comes to financing, when it comes to investment? I think they... I don't think so. Mm. I feel that, um, you know, India is has so much opportunity. Like people keep asking, what will be different in the next 10 years? I keep saying, what will not be different? <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't think anything, like what will change? Everything will change, mm. right? We just live in such incredible times. I feel after probably 1200 or 1300 years, we have our moment of glory coming again. So imagine if we get, the, we are getting the chance to live again in such a time, where the next 100 years are going to be so incredible for India. You look at our GDP, right? Um, it took us 31 years for the, for the last 3 trillion of yeah. GDP. It will take us 7 years for the next 3 trillion. We are living in such a time in this country. I mean, we should be like really happy. So, I am totally optimistic about the future, uh, about the startup ecosystem. Also, uh, you know, domestic capital has gotten activated. Digitization has gotten activated. The smartest students out of the best colleges or any college in our country are doing what now? Yeah. They're starting up. That's a sign of the times to come. Right? So I, I'm actually quite optimistic. I feel capital is just an ingredient. At the end of the day, it boils down to do we have a broader enabling environment, which we do, and do we have the key ingredient, which is talent, which also we do. Yeah. So I think capital will come and go, there'll be fits and starts. But the enduring trend in the ecosystem is going to be wildly positive. What is difficult, Kunal? Being an entrepreneur, being an investor, I think investor to bahut chilled out hoga, kya tough hai? Bilkul chilled out hai. Look, I'm biased because, you know, in my heart, obviously, I'm a founder. Yeah. And, but excellence in anything is hard because, you know, ex it's not easy because to be really, really good at something, you got to focus, right? Excellence only comes with focus. Yeah. There are always competitive forces, market forces in anything you do. If it's worth your time to chase it, it's also worth someone else's time to chase it. Then the only reason you will succeed is if you are excellent. And you will be excellent only if you focus. And you will focus only if you know how to say no to things, which I can tell you very few people, very few people know how to. Yeah. Right? Most people have a bias towards yes, 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 right? Actually, excellence comes from people who have the bias to say no, 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 yes, no, 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 no. And, but um, look, mostly I've met a lot of friends both on the investor side and the founder side and most of them would be happier doing only one of the two, right? I have a sort of unique beast in that way. But you know, I think the lives of founders and investors have their own pros and cons. For a founder, you know, they are in control of their destiny. What they are passionate about, they can bring it to life. Very few people in this world have that ability. You have bosses, you have, you know, various like checks and balance people around you. Here you have full freedom to chase your destiny. You're in, you're in control. But then comes with it a lot of accountability towards employees, customers, shareholders, board members, uh, partners, etc. All your eggs are in that one basket. Right? So there are pros and cons. But for investors, the amazing thing is you have the ability to dream and dream multiple dreams at the same time, right? Yeah. In, and in sort of chasing, oh, what can this become? Like just thinking, what can this become? 
but the flip side of that is you have no control over it <laughs> right like you've sort of you picked your bet now it's up to the founder so you have to be a bystander and help wherever needed so i think there are pros and cons in both there is no like one is better one is but i obviously have a bias you know most vcs i've met in the last 10 years they always say we invest in good teams we invest in good founders and one investor i have to tell you guys a joke also so i was interviewing a uh, vc very amazing guy and i you know i thought oh we become friends and he said i said what kind of companies he said only only one thing we optimize for the founder has to be very good the founder you know we can see through the founder and after the interview i said listen i won't name him i said what do you think of me as a founder he said shadda you are brilliant i said will you invest in me and then he said mm. <laughs> so tab se mujhe bahut shock mein lag rahi thi when people say that uh, i invest in good founders and as founders we get confused what does that mean because we are mostly good people building our dreams i think the answer is as complex and nuanced as saying what makes a good person yeah okay right? because to be a good founder you don't have to be the most intelligent you don't have to be the most hard working i mean you have to be intelligent and hard working we don't have to be so over indexed on one thing but you actually have to be a good person because in the end your journey is going to be shaped not by you or your brilliance or your work ethic alone it's going to be shaped by all the people you are able to inspire to bring on board your journey your vision right yeah. your passion and invigorate them to work on that it was not their vision it was not their passion and they will only want to work with a good person in an ecosystem where we know it's a revolving door every yeah. 12 18 yeah. months because we spent so much time screening for culture right so so at the end of the day you know there are obviously a few key attributes that if one were to think through one i feel just a single minded focus on a singular problem and having deep obsession and passion for it i think that's a sign of a you know good founder likely because you know if you are very distracted keep changing track often it will be very hard to the earlier point of being excellent at it right yeah. literally having excellence um you know the ability to inspire people is so important can you stand in front of 100 people when you have 100 people and tell them bad news or why last month was so tough why you lost your largest customer why the deal investment that was about to happen didn't happen why you have 6 months of money left yeah right and what is your plan to solve for it and whether they'll believe you or not right and that belief and that trust has to be earned with your team over a period of time so you got to have that humility that you have to invest yourself physically and emotionally with your team for them to truly trust you when that time comes you know the resilience we talked about super important there's no straight line journey right like when you zoom out everything looks oh wow starting point end point amazing right but the it wasn't like this right it was this and having that resilience to just stay the course um and finally like versatility there's a fine line between passion and purpose and stubbornness the ability to be to have the intellectual honesty and say now i've heard enough evidence i think i want to change my mind hmm. there's no shame in that yeah right we have changed our mind many times and maybe it doesn't work out when you change your mind but should be open minded to change it not every day hopefully yeah 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 but there comes a point where you've seen enough non conforming evidence to your original views where you have to say i need to change my view now yeah right and that requires tremendous intellectual humility um, but all good founders have great humility they are good people um, they are able to inspire other people and they are very single minded in their focus now we'll uh, open this yeah hey kunal uh, so my question would be like when we talk about uh, atmanirbhar bharat in all the other frames we are progressing very much but when it comes to uh, private equity or maybe funds adequacy in startup ecosystem why is it like india is on, only having their own uh, 80% or 85% funds and most of the other funds are sorry reverse like 12% to 15% are coming from india and rest of the other funds are coming from outside india where wealth creation is happening outside so what do you think is stopping us being a uh, capital adequate while historically that is true i think the future will be very different i feel this is um, 
you know, India's time has come. And most importantly, us Indians have realized that India's time has come. And it is this moment where you're seeing domestic capital. Um, I think we should clap for our country. Uh, and that's why you're seeing early signs of domestic capital finally getting activated. We are not foreign investors, right? Everything Rohit and I have ever earned, we have put back into other startups, right? And everything we've ever earned from investing in those startups, we've again put back in the next cohort of startups. And I know we are not alone. I know there are others like us, and there'll be many, many more like us. And I don't think we appreciate enough. Um, and this, I'm not pandering to any constituency here, but I don't think we truly appreciate enough how much, the ro how much of a role the evangelizing by the government for startups has helped that sentiment. When now, there are conversations happening in the smallest towns of the country and like young kids telling their parents, startup karna hai, job nahi karna hai. And it being a very acceptable conversation. I remember with my parents, when I was in 10th and we had to decide whether I had to do commerce or science, there was like a big debate. I said I wanted to do commerce and my parents said, nahi science hi karoge, engineer koi job milta hai. But now the conversation is job or startup. And parents are okay with startup. So everyone, like, when you imagine you're a parent, you're saying, um, my kid is doing a startup. Let me invest maybe in a fund that actually supports startups, which is a domestic VC fund. Because the kids around me, my kids, are all going and doing startups now. They are not going and doing jobs. So I have, I have zero qualms about what this will look like. Give it a few years. Um, this ratio will be absolutely inverse. I think we have seen a long journey here in the last 15 years and you know, I remember at times when, you know, when we started off, we had to actually take calls of our employees and explain to their parents why joining a startup is not a bad idea. Things have really changed. I wanted to ask you, so uh, you know, Tatin is one of the very few operator-led you know, uh, you know, op or operator-founded uh, you know, funds that are so successful. Are there opportunities for other founders to join either through investing in the fund or you know, their time and their investments in the fund. I think that is needed, you know, but as founders, we could probably help a lot more and there's a lot more needed here. You know, Rohit and I are a little weird. Uh, we're a bit strange people, but our view is that if we take external capital, we'll have to start explaining why, how we do what we do, why we do what we do. And if someone asks me, oh, why did you invest in this baby products company? I have no idea, right? I said, fantastic founder. I have babies. I think I would want them to use clean products. Um, sounds like a good, good investment. Right now, I can't, you can't, sometimes some decisions you can't over intellectualize also. And then you, you back them to the, to the end. Like we have a, the other issue is we don't like to sell. There are companies we are invested in for a decade now. Right? If we were running a fund, our investors would kill us. That bhai, wa bhi karne hote hai, sirf lene nahi hote. Um, but I feel that there will be many other operators and there are many other operators who are setting up funds who are very good at what they do. They bring that operator mindset I was talking about and I'm sure they'd be open to taking capital from others. Um, and I think that's great for the ecosystem because somewhere while each one of us may not get the opportunity to invest directly in companies, but each one of us as participants in this ecosystem would want that some of our love, some of our yeah. capital is spread across the ecosystem. So I think there are many such opportunities right now and there'll be more in the future also. If Kunal start from uh, November 2022, what will be the easiest, what will be the easiest and the tough thing for Kunal? Four things. One, first check, crack in the seed fund, make a unicorn, or take an IPO, Fourth, I pass this opportunity while I mail ko pahne ke baad, fir se motivate ho ke usko mail likhna. So, I think sub, sub context pe hota hai. Um, you know, her person or her company ka context alag hota hai. Ho sakta hai koi company badi, matlab solid chal rahi hai. Bhar bhar ke profit bana rahi hai, bhar bhar ke revenue grow ho raha hai, sab must chal raha hai. You know, for them, they'll make an IPO look easy also, which is not an easy process, right? Um, I feel at the end of the day, 
सबसे हार्ड चीज मेरे को लगता है जो मैं कुछ पहले कह रहा था आई आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू पिक ए बी सी डी बट आई गिव यू अ मोर ब्रॉडर आंसर सबसे हार्ड चीज ऑन्टरप्रनर की लाइफ में रहता है कि आपके अराउंड लोगों को इंस्पायर्ड रखना राइट दैट्स द हार्डेस्ट थिंग बिकॉज एवरी डे यू वेक अप ब्रश योर टीच शावर शो अप टू द ऑफिस आपका बटन शुरू आप इंस्पिरेशन देनी शुरू कर देते हो राइट एंड बट यू हैव टू डू इट फॉर अ डेकेड इफ यू हैव टू डू इट फॉर वन डे वन वीक वन मंथ मे बी वन ईयर इट वॉज ओके द एबिलिटी टू कंसिस्टेंटली डू दैट ओवर अ लॉन्ग पीरियड ऑफ टाइम थ्रू द थिक एंड थिन इज वॉट क्रिएट्स एंड्योरिंग बिजनेसिस राइट एंड आई टेक अ लॉट ऑफ इंस्पिरेशन फ्रॉम सच पीपल हु आर एबल टू जस्ट कीप इनविग्रेटिंग एंड रीविग्रेटिंग दम सेल्स एंड द पीपल अराउंड दैम whether it's their investors whether it's their board members whether it's their employees whether it's their customers i think that's probably the hardest thing to do because it requires tremendous amount of physical and mental fortitude which is very rare to find how do you decide just by an email that whether you you're going to invest you said either you respond with an s or no so how do you decide do you go with your intuition or how it is in the end intuition right i don't think there is any model there is no excel there is no checklist maybe there is a checklist in in our heads but there is no checklist on paper you don't want to see the the founders we are investing behind are the creators of the future they are the creators of the future of india how can we put past frameworks to ascertain the creators of the future of india right right future of our country because they are going to be creating things that have not been done before so if you try and say oh this work this didn't work and hence will this work and this not work you'll never invest in anything that's going to be ground breaking we all as entrepreneurs need to give a big round of applause to konal ban he has been defining the last 10 years and i'm hoping konal 250 270 whatever the number may you keep on investing in thousands of more entrepreneur thank you so much let's give a big round of applause to him thank you